If someone asks me what thing in life sometimes drives me crazy, finding owls is high up on that list. Ever since I photographed my first owl, I felt this strange addiction to them. Finding these incredibly beautiful creatures can be really complicated, and I've spent countless hours in the forest without seeing or hearing anything. But after many different encounters with these creatures, I put together three for me valuable tips I wish I knew when I started out. You are gonna get tip number one. The first tip I wanna share with you is don't go home when you think the light is too dark to photograph in. I'm gonna talk to you about this one because I've made it so many times. Like every single time when I when I started out, I, I went home like the, uh, the second the sun went down the horizon because I, I thought that my gear couldn't handle it. My aperture of 6.3 was not enough to capture anything with not 100% of the daylight. And now I've shot owls at midnight and I still have the aperture of 6.3. Using a really slow shutter speed helps a ton of light get into the sensor. So everything that moves in the time frame of when the sensor is open, is gonna get blurry. So when you have a slow shutter speed, the subjects needs to be really, really still. And the good thing about owls is that they are extremely still, like super still, I mean it. When they're not flying, obviously, so this is for sitting shots. This technique is really common in landscape photography where you photograph like the stars and astros with a tree or something in the dark with a slow shutter speed and a tripod. So you need a tripod for this. And if you master this, it's super powerful in wildlife too. And not many people use it. So um, it's a good technique of getting those great shots. So what I do practically, I start off by locking the tripod into the subject. And sometimes I have to manually adjust the focus or sometimes the autofocus does the job for me. And um, what I do is I put on a five second self timer to compensate for that wobble that I do when I press the shutter button. So I press the shutter button, the camera will wait five seconds and take the photo. Uh, this really, really helps and you can use a cheaper tripod with this technique also, so it's super good. So using this technique, you can get a lot of cool shots. And as you have the sensor open for a longer amount of time, the atmosphere of the photo gets really cool and something you can only get when shooting in the darkness. So when I realized this, this was a uh, mind blowing for me actually. I didn't have to save up for the, that 400 2.8 that everybody wants. And I still want it, but um, I also want a house. So the second tip I'm gonna talk about is do a lot of research of what type of biotope the specific owl likes and go there by dusk or dawn and spend a lot of time. So time is such an important factor in this. If you invest time into these two things, I guarantee you will see something that you want to capture on camera. So for the pygmy owl, for example, after a lot of encounters with the uh, pygmy owl, I've learned that they like, so it's usually quite deep into the forest with a younger spruce forest in the middle of it. Spruce trees that are three to five meter tall and around it, it's older spruce trees with pine trees. Uh, and it's not uncommon that you see a bog in the area. That's a typical biotope of the pygmy owl, from my experiences. If I found these places when I'm out, uh, you can go on Google Maps and search for them. So that, that is a good tip. Now when I know how the typical biotope looks like, I can go to that place on Google Maps and see how it looks like. And I can like search the area from above. I can see bog, like bogs, bog, bog, I don't know. It's a mossy in Sweden, like this mossy area with a lot of water. It's, you don't, you, you need things to go in it. <laughs> and that's a great tool to find new places just by sitting home by the computer uh, when it's rainy or you can't go outside. So, um, so yeah, that's uh, something I do a lot actually. Okay, so tip number, focus three change your mindset. So I believe that you deserve your luck. And this mindset has actually boosted my patience a lot. Like, a lot. I try to think that a failed session is just one step closer to finding them 
And uh, as I mentioned earlier, investing time will get you more successful. It's just a patience game. You see a lot more in the forest if you're out 10 times in a row than you do in your couch watching Friends. So if you go out 10 times in a row, you don't see anything, you don't hear anything, you will get it back someday. I, I usually think like this. It's, it's not like someone up there is doing it for me, I guess, but it helps me accept failure a bit more. So it's not a failure anymore. So it's just like doing the lottery. Um, if you buy a lot of tickets, your chance of winning will be bigger. And uh, except this is free and I like free stuff. I really hope you uh, like this video. And if you want me to do more of these kind of videos, tell me down below and like this video. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with uh, finding the owls. We might see each other in the forest. Bye.